When presented with a Tifonia screen, we have a number of regions of buttons that can be used. We have all the green buttons as discussed, which are the user control buttons or ventilate buttons. We have the parameter buttons, which are ECG, CO2, AP, oxygen, SpO2, and ISO. And we have the setup buttons, which include this corner of the screen, the bottom right corner of the screen, which include the alarm silence, freeze traces, system, patient data, configure, and the push to ventilate button. This video is going to describe the action and uses of the setup buttons. We'll start with the alarm silence button. Should an alarm be active, then it can be silenced in, in three ways uh, by pressing the alarm silence button. A single press, like this, will silence an alarm for 60 seconds. The alarm silence button changes to an active state, as shown by the change in colour, and the button counts down the seconds until it's uh, inactive again. This is useful for when an alarm is periodic or you don't want to cancel it or whatever and just want to silence it for the 60 seconds uh, so it goes away. When the 60 seconds has elapsed, the alarm silence button will return to normal. If you click on it any time, it will go back to its normal state. The other way the alarm silence button can be used is to silence a repeated alarm, for example, an ECG heart rate alarm, where you don't want to silence all the alarms in the system, but you're very well aware of the ECG alarm for the heart rate and don't want to have repeated reminders. So if that alarm's going off, press and hold the alarm silence button until it says locked. Once it says locked, it means that if that alarm uh, occurs, then it'll no longer be audible. It'll just have a flashing border to the relevant button and if any other alarm were to occur such as a CO2 high or any other type of alarm it would still actually break through and be a, an audible alarm as well. The third way to use the alarm silence button is to hold it even longer and it will say permanent. When it's in a permanent state it flashes to indicate that all alarms are silenced for all conditions. So there will be no alarm noise at all for any condition whatsoever. To cancel any of these, as I've mentioned before, simply click on the alarm button. The other button next to it, the freeze traces button, is used to help mainly with ECG or perhaps with CO2 waveforms to help look at um, a CO2 or ECG trace before it disappears from the screen. Click on the button and the, the traces on the screen freeze and you have a countdown of 60 seconds at which point when it gets to zero the traces will resume as normal. At any time you can click on the freeze traces and the, freeze, and the traces will resume. The system button can be used to access and control parts of the system. Click on the button you have first of all a systems error box. If errors occur then they will appear in full in detail in the system errors box. Below that we have the leak and compliance option which we saw in a previous video which allows us to go in and perform a leak and compliance test. Below that we have the language option uh, which at the moment is not com uh, fully completed and defaults to English. And below that we have the user manual button which again uh, not yet fully completed so the options are at the moment greyed out. We also have the exit button, and this is where you will um, exit the software when finished with the ventilator for the day. Click on exit, it says are you sure you want to exit, you say yes, it says your preset changes have not been saved, save now. Now if you've made any changes to the configuration of your screen or any of the initial changes, then you should say yes and save them now. It says the data has not been finalised. Would you like to finalise saving all the current patient data and recordings? And if you've just finished a recording for your patient, say yes. This brings up the uh, summary screen for your patient data. And here we can see that no data has been entered. entered. We have an anonymous patient, a zero patient ID, and nothing filled in for any of the other parameters. In normal circumstances, these would have been filled in by yourselves. And you would hit accept. 
and the data would be saved. And then the software closes and we're back to the Tifonia screen. In the patient data button, we see a number of options relating to patient information. The best place to start is with the patient. When you initially start recording, all the values are not filled in and the patient name is by default anonymous. So on this instance, we'll change this name to our horse's name, Jasmine. And I'll put in our hospital number and we'll put in our owner name, Mr. Holt. And I'll put our patient ID. PID 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Our breed type in this instance is an Arab and it's four years old. You can either put in an age or put in a date of birth. Uh, it's a male and it weighs 564 kilos. Oops. 564 kilos. That's the first bit of information we have for the patient uh, on, in the patient data section. Next one is in notes. In notes, we, this is free text here where we can put any information relating to the patient. So uh, this particular horse, for example, may have come in with a colic and had pre-existing treatment. So we put some notes into that effect. Then our app presentation tab is um, an input screen to let us put information in for the anaesthetic record. So in the anaesthetist chart, we can drop down anaesthetist, in this instance, K. Simpson. If we wanted to add anaesthetist, we click on this ellipsis button here, click add. We can add Mr. John routes to that and close and now in the option we have both of them there. The surgeon in this instance is Mr. Smith and the procedure is an arthroscopy. Uh, and again if we wanted to add our own procedure we put that in there add and this would be um, colic investigation and close. Now we change that to colic investigation. The fasted animal has been parted, uh, fasted, sorry. Uh, the animal uh, is not panting. Uh, the anaesthetic risk is uh, for our colic is assessed as three, it's a mild, mild colic. The respiratory rate has been measured as 12, PCV is 48. Total proteins haven't been done, but you have not been done, and the pulse rate was 75. Uh, the temperature in Celsius was um, 41. So rather high. Okay, and that concludes the. Uh, input screen at presentation and then the logging screen uh, the slow data logging is set for every five seconds by default I would suggest you leave it here unless you have some good reason uh, to change either to conserve uh, hard disk space or for research purposes where you may need to record at a faster rate but five seconds represents a good average rate between file size and collection of data we have two options here to record spontaneous or ventilated breath. Again, largely unnecessary for most recordings, but may be required if uh, in a research or other situation.
For the anaesthesia record, of course, the heart rate can be derived from a number of sources, ECG, IBP, or even pulse oximetry. Uh, by default, this one will be the heart rate will be logged from the ECG. We also see a button here called Anesthetic Record Start. And this is important because often a machine is connected up, set up, filled with gas and left in a primed state ready for the horse to come in. And it can be some 20-30 minutes until the horse arrives. So if that is the case, then as soon as the animal is connected, you come in and click on Anesthetic Record Start. And it says, are you sure you want to set the start of the anesthetic recording from now? because anaesthetic record data and trend data prior to this point will not be viewable. And you say OK. And it means that all the 20 or 30 minutes of rubbish ECG numbers or pulse ox numbers or whatever may have occurred prior to that point won't be included in the uh, anaesthetic record data. And then that's all you need to do for input data. And we can close that now. But you'll see, you'll have noticed in the patient data when I was in there, there's also a tab called View Trends. And in View Trends, we can choose to look at the trend data for any of the measured parameters. So here's blood pressure. Of course, there's nothing running at the moment. But if, we, if there was and I clicked anywhere on the screen, such as this, it will show me instantaneously all the values wherever the mouse is held down and the time associated with it. And we can do it for all of these values for the CO2 and we'll get our expired and inspired values for ECG heart rate and we'll get the heart rate values here for respiratory rate for peak inspiratory pressure any of these values can all be looked at as a trend value and provides very useful information during the course of an anaesthetic. Uh, the VC tab is uh, not an enabled in many machines, as this is for volume catnography, which at the moment is in the trial stage of development. I will mention the final part of the patient data. Information is that in the logging value, when you finish your anesthetic and you wish to finalize the data, come into this screen and click on finalize recording. You'll be asked whether you want to actually close this and, and make no further additions to the recording. And if you want to continue, say yes. And then you get a summary of all the information we put in previously. We have our notes, the hospital numbers, the owner's name, etc. Click to accept. We're now back to an option where both of these buttons are available, the anesthetic record start and the finalized recording, then if we close this option, we'll see that we're now back to a patient name of anonymous, and we would need to go back into patient data, into the patient option, and set up the patient details for the next patient. The configure button is used to configure the machine, or parts of the machine, to your own specifications. And this introduces the concept of presets. At the moment, there was a single preset called a custom preset, and as it's the only one, it's the one that's active at the moment. However, it's possible to create new presets um, and assign them to whatever type of activity you like. If we click Save as New, we now have our custom preset one which is active which we can now rename and we can call this um, for example full preset okay and in our full preset we go into our initial settings and our full preset initial setting will be a tidal volume of so we say two liters a respiratory rate of 10 an IT time of 1.5, maximum working pressure limit of 25, a buffer volume of 5, and all the other parameters can remain the same. Close that. 
and you now see at the top of the screen here that we're running the full preset. Let me show you what happens if I come into this full preset now. If I go into configure and custom preset and switch to the old custom preset, then we see that tidal volume is 5, respiratory rate is 6, and respiratory time is 2. I will now switch to the full preset, say yes, and now we see that the tidal volume is 2, the respiratory rate is 10, and the respiratory time is 1.5, because these are the preset values that we entered for our initial settings. You can create any number of uh, presets, and these presets can be either, uh, as I did here, in relation to an animal type, or they can be in terms of a person's own preferences. So for example, if I went to save as new, went into this one, renamed it as K, K Simpson preset, then this would be my own particular preset settings that I want commonly to, or, or to be my initial settings for, for whenever I start using the system. And I have a particular requirement for wanting a buffer. Volume shall be say of 12 liters. So that's, I put that in there. And these values will be used every time I come into the machine and select my preset. And the last button in the list, because we're familiar with the push to ventilate button, is the event button. If I click on the events button, we can add an event at any time, and this will be added to the anesthetic record chart that we can view later. So, if I click on there and then add, then I can put um, such a thing as animal repositioned. see and then we'll accept that and close now that will appear in the events list I can come in back into here and I could if I wish update this and change this maybe change the time because I did it retrospectively so it actually happened five minutes ago and update that or I can add another one and here we can add, add or remove standard events. So we have some straightforward standard events such as start procedure, accept that. And obviously start procedure uh, is the next one in the list. And then add another one. There's a standard procedure for um, fluid administration and accept, it gets added to the list. Now if you want to add your own, click on the add remove standard events, into this screen, click add, and put a new standard event such as uh, IV dopamine started, and then close, and now that will become one of the standard events, except all this will appear in the anesthetic record scene at the end. So that concludes the setup buttons. We're going to exit this, this software now and look at the anesthetic record. We say yes, we have to exit, save our presets, save our data, this is for the under name anonymous. If I wanted to change this, then I would click change, go back into patient data. Instead of anonymous, we'll put oops. We'll put my name. Okay, C 
Simpson. And then we'll finalize recording. Yes, accept all the changes. And now we can exit. And we go to view data. Look at this on a set it record. Then we'll see that we have the animal name is Kay Simpson, the anesthetist is Jay Childs, the surgeon is Jay Smith, and the procedure was a colic investigation. And if we come down to the events, then we'll see that the events are all listed uh, in time order that we put them into the system.